Here is a 2024 Hyundai Tucson SEL. This year, we're getting a few upgrades for safety, going against rivals like Toyota and Honda and giving an option for a pickup truck. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and the fascia is gonna start up with the hidden daytime runnings and headlight assembly, all LED that integrate into the gloss black grille and the lower gets the matte black. I like the Santa Cruz fascia a little bit more because it looks more rugged and athletic. The fenders flare out a little bit and the way the headlamp assembly projects into the fenders and they put the same thing on top of the hood which closes up a 2.5 liter inline four cylinder with 187 horsepower, 178 pound feet of torque paired to an eight speed automatic transmission. All trims will receive the same engine option unless you go to the hybrid, achieving 23 MPGs for the city and 29 MPGs for the highway. 17 inch wheels is standard. The convenience package will option a 19 inch wheel, which is also on the limited and you get the matte black that's going to surround the fenders. They bulge out a bit and the styling goes a little bit more wild. You're going to have lines that go all over the place for the side. So it gives a sporty cue similar to the Honda CRV or the Toyota RAV4. Matte black for the roof rails, but gloss black for the shark fan antenna. Because we're in the SEL, I would have liked to see a little bit more gloss black materials because it's not the base trim. You want to stand out a little bit more so and when you're giving the same wheel design unless you add the convenience package, what makes the SEL stand from the base trim on the exterior? Towing up to 2,000 pounds, LED tail lights, and I like the way they have implemented this into the rear. I don't like how they put the Hyundai badging on the rear window because it looks like it's a sticker and they do the same thing with the hrv for the all-wheel drive emblem on the lower it gets a little bit of athletic style kind of a diffuser with the satin aluminum that's going to run into your reverse lights reverse camera and reverse parking sensors power lift gate going into 38.7 cubic feet underneath the floor gets a spare tire 12 volt charger split fold the rear bench at a 40 60 foot from the back increasing cargo to 74.8 cubic feet it sits a little lower so it is easy to put cargo inside let's go inside start up so you can hear that exhaust now Cloth seats, 10-way power seat adjustment for the driver, four-way manual seat adjustment for the passenger. Headroom and legroom. The foot wells are deep. The width isn't bad. I put my bags like I do in some reviews to show how much space you have. The dashboard has the same setup as the Santa Cruz where it integrates into the door panels and gives a two-tier dash setup. Eight inch multimedia with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio with B-Link. Put it into reverse, we get a reverse camera with trajectory, you can change the camera layout for the tow, and the gloss black will be all around the center with the air vents, and they get the satin aluminum for all of the sides. Working into a dual climate control settings, 12 volt, two USB, QI wireless charging pad, and the key fob for the Tucson. Leather around the shifter. Because this is the all wheel drive, you get the locker and driver mode select, which you can change from snow, smart, sport and normal on the 4.25 TFT display. Otherwise it's analog and it can go through an array of information, different settings for the driver. The heated seat switches are gonna be in the gloss black. Open up this, it's gonna be more sporty. It's deep and it's pretty wide with a four spoke steering wheel, multi-function with adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist and the stocks also receive the gloss black. Going into the door panel, you're gonna get this little pattern that goes around. It's gonna be everyday materials everywhere except for right where your elbows are. One touch up and down for the front windows and a medium sized storage pocket with a beverage holder carved out in the center. For the back seats, headroom. And we can recline these seats, which they go pretty far back. And leg room. 
storage behind both of the front seats, air vents, USB ports, armrests with cup holders. The door panel gets the same exact materials that are in the front and it actually continues the pattern all the way around the dash. Paying attention to detail is basically what we're talking about here, except everything is hard materials. One beverage holder that's going to be carved out. Sliding into the center, feet space can be shared or you can have your own area for feet. The rails are pushed up, but in shoulder space is not too bad considering it's a smaller SUV and headroom with the seats sitting upright is still good for anyone over six foot tall. 2.5 liter with 187 horsepower, 178 pound feet of torque, but it sips fuel because you're getting in the mid 20s to near 30 MPGs, which for an everyday SUV, that's always a delight to have. Towing is right on par with pretty much everybody. The Toyota RAV4 will be the best in class. In performance numbers, this is gonna be the least in class, but it has more horsepower than the Tiguan. Here we go. You get that loud inline four cylinder note it's not as drone sounding as some, but when you're looking at maybe a Mazda CX-5, that's going to be more of an athletic sound. The sound deadening to this is not the most quiet, but it's better than the Volkswagen Tiguan. The steering is a little bit more heavier than the CX-5 or CX-50. It doesn't feel very wide in the lanes. It's not very long. It's gonna take me to some pros and cons, starting with the pros. You can either option a pickup truck or an SUV. So it's the best of both worlds. If you go to the pickup truck, you wanna get the turbocharged with 311 pound-feet of torque because that thing is just motivated and you'll get better towing capabilities. This is going to be something that sips fuel, but you have a little bit of towing capacity because 2,000 pounds, let's face it, once you put a trailer on there, there's not much more you can tow. But cargo is great, almost 80 cubic feet with all the seats flat and you can fold them in the cargo. You don't have to go to the rear door to flip the switch to put them down. So it's a little bit more easy access for a day in and day out use. Turn radius at a stop point is going to receive two lanes, which is basically the same in every Hyundai. It's a smooth suspension, independent McPherson strut and an independent multi-link rear. So you don't really feel any of the imperfections and because it's a 17 inch wheel, it soaks up every single thing. Comparing this against the new Subaru Crosstrack, all of the Subarus are getting CVT transmissions. Here you're getting an eight speed. You're gonna have more storage space, you're gonna have more leg and headroom for the back seat. You sit up a little bit higher in the Hyundai line. It's very similar to the Toyota RAV4, the way you sit, but the sound deadening is going to be better in this than in the Toyota. The big problem that I see here is how they've converted this into a pickup truck. The Santa Cruz is just a little bit more usable and both of them will have the same suspension setup. It's gonna be more athletic for the exterior, more towing, more payload, and just about the same amount of space for the rear occupants. The major difference that you'll have is you can recline these seats back. So for family use, this one may tick the box a little bit more so. For a rugged, more usable for outdoors, that's going to tick the box a little bit more so. Premium in price is gonna be a few thousand dollar difference but then you're also getting an increase in power underneath the hood, which you will not receive that with this trim. Now for some performance. To get this little SUV motivated, you're gonna have to really hit a near three RPM for it to feel like it's going some speed. Once you go past that, the engine note will filter in but overall, it's still a cushiony drive with the seats even being cloth. 
The sound system is good with the lows and highs and usually when you get into a bass type of vehicle without any upgrades, it's going to not sound as well as this. Going to a Honda HRV, you'll have a little bit more storage in the center in the design layout also for the door panels. Whereas here, the back door panels are the same and the front door panels as the Santa Cruz. So you're losing a little bit of cargo capacity, but when you start going into premium vehicles like this or a Mazda, that's usually the case. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise website and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Brandon Hyundai for giving us this 2024 Hyundai Tucson SEL for our car review.